Good morning, this is Sean Roberts. I'm Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network. And this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me Peter Resavi, Wireless Technology Analyst, and we're talking about 5G. Um, Peter, I wanted to ask you specifically about the proposed DoD uh, managed spectrum and capacity sharing uh, plan uh, that's been, plan's probably uh, too specific of a word. Um, it was put out as an RFI is my understanding. So it's more of a proposal of a plan. Um, uh, what's, what's your opinion and how that, um, how that could work? And uh, perhaps we could try to compare it to something like uh, what we previously talked about, like CBRS. The RFI is very thin on detail. It is really just requesting information about what kind of spectrum sharing and capacity sharing uh, technologies might exist. But if you read between the lines and if you know what the ambitions are for some of the companies uh, behind the scenes for this RFI, then you would realize that it's a plan for a DOD uh, controlled network that somehow provides services to DOD, but then also um, provides excess, if, if there is excess capacity, to um, commercial networks. Um, the, the whole idea, though, is predicated on technology that does not exist. And it's technology that would take many years to develop. And what's scary about the RFI is that it contemplates using spectrum that has already been put aside for commercial networks. Is this the, the uh, 3.45 to 3.55 gigahertz range that's uh, proposed to be auctioned or is planned to be auctioned off next year? Yes, speaking? exactly. That's 100 megahertz of spectrum that multiple entities, um, including, ironically, the Department of Defense and NTIA and FCC and the White House and um, many people in Washington, D.C. have worked really hard over um, you know, at least the past six months to figure out as being the next um, best uh, chunk of spectrum for 5G in the mm -hmm. mid-band area. And the mid-band area, as I've previously discussed, is absolutely critical to the success of 5G. Um, so that spectrum on the FCC is already moving forward to auction that next year. And there's significant momentum for making the spectrum available, taking it off the table at this point for a completely unproven network approach, um, I think would be an extremely bad idea. And just to rehash that mid band network you speak of is from uh, three to four gigahertz. Exactly. It's those yeah, so mid-band really is, you know, anywhere from two to six gigahertz. Okay. Um, but as far as new spectrum that could be made available for commercial operation, it's really the three to four gigahertz um, band that right now is the best opportunity area for augmenting the capabilities of today's commercial networks. Right. And something we mentioned uh, previously, but I'll go back to it a little bit, is that China um, has um, allocated 600 megahertz in that mid-band area already. Do you think that's um, basically enough for them, enough bandwidth range for them to be able to fully deploy 5G or are they gonna have to allocate more spectrum? Uh, that's an extremely good place to start. That amount of spectrum um, gives you extremely powerful networks. 5G technology is gonna keep um, improving, it's already very flexible. It can use frequencies up, up to about 50 gigahertz. And over time, we'll get better at using those higher uh, frequencies. But okay. um, in the meantime, having that much mid-band spectrum pr uh, puts China in an extremely powerful position for deploying um, national networks that provide a foundation for all kinds of other innovation whether it's um, autonomous cars or um, AI systems that um, are used uh, in conjunction with these networks. So in a way, we're, uh, this proposed, um, call it a proposal, it's probably not uh, completely accurate, but it's essentially um, this RFI that's been put out, um, has it uh, made some of the participants um, in this coming auction nervous? Um, I, I can't imagine that it wouldn't. Yeah, it's made it's made um, it's made them extremely nervous. So to be clear, the 
um, RFI uh, looks at everything from 3.1 to 3.55 gigahertz. Okay. Um, which includes that 3.45 to 3.55 that really has already been set aside. Right. Um, but now it's pulling, um, putting into question whether that 100 megahertz um, will go forward with the auction um, next year. But there's been a huge outcry. Um, multiple industry associations have, have written to the White House, have um, made their views um, clear that they think that any kind of um, DOD kind of controlled network is, is or you know, any notion of a, a nationalized type of network, um, anything where the government plays a central role for network operation is absolutely not the way to go right now. Given that we have commercial networks that are online, they're effective, they're working, um, and just really need the spectrum um, to be able to reach their full capability. Right. Yeah, it's a kind of, uh, well, it would be putting, putting ourselves at a disadvantage at the very least compared to um, a, uh, uh, the example that China has given by um, allocating spectrum so that business could aggressively expand rather than having to uh, come up with this uh, unusual um, or unproven, probably more accurate um, sharing um, concept. Um, uh, has anybody mentioned, and this is a one-off, uh, correct me if it, this analogy doesn't, or I think it's analogy, uh, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't pan out, is it's, um, ARPANET originally was um, a, a federal, federally built and managed network, and uh, as soon as it became obvious that they had commercial applications and it could be run better, I'm kind of being a little loose with the facts here. Um, it, it became a, uh, they released control of it and uh, essentially put it to the university system and eventually became commercially uh, managed. Um, is that a, some, a little bit of a comparison here or is that not work? Yeah, it could be. Uh, I, I think a great role for government here is to provide funding, um, provide expertise in, for, for instance, spectrum um, sharing approaches. There's nothing inherently wrong with spectrum sharing. It just has to be designed correctly. 5G, in fact, does have spectrum sharing built into it. For mm -hmm. example, with 5G, the, a radio channel can simultaneously support both 4G and 5G operation. And that capability is called dynamic spectrum sharing. Uh, 5G also has the ability to share spectrum with unlicensed users. Um, who are using Wi-Fi types of devices in five gigahertz and um, 5G can operate in those same bands. But in both those cases, that sharing capability was designed at a very low level and um, is deeply baked into the standards. And right. it was a process that took years and years to figure out um, and to formalize in standards. And now people are building um, against those standards. So similarly, um, you know, in the future, more um, intelligent spectrum sharing does make sense because not every system uses all the spectrum all the time. So if you can share that capacity intelligently across multiple systems, um, you know, that, that's a great idea, um, but it's extremely complicated and so a better use of such research funding would be to do the experimentation, do the research, and then contemplate integrating it into future versions of wireless technology, such as for 6G, and then have that be the model or you know, partial model for deployment in the next decade when we'll have 6G systems. But expecting that we can do it now and doing it in a way that actually makes us more competitive against other countries um, just doesn't make sense. It's just not realistic. Right. And if I understand it correctly, the, the, the decision-making of the spec, what Spectrum share is with this, right? Not with um, a bureaucrat or um, some remote database or a sensor network figuring out what's, what's going on. You know, it's, it's my phone that's sharing the Spectrum, not some other system is like possibly being proposed here. Right, yeah, I mean, basically a sharing system would require, you know, additional 
um, intelligence in the network. Right now, your device, your smartphone communicates um, with the network and um, it's a controlled environment. The network knows what spectrum it has and knows how to allocate capacity in real time to people's smartphones and internet of things, devices and so forth. Uh, once you get into a spectrum sharing architecture, now you're having to coordinate with entirely different types of systems. For example, in the DOD case with um, military radar systems, right? I mean, right. They're, they're, they have completely different needs and operate in completely different ways. So the complexity of the system um, just goes up exponentially. And I guess the, the, the real thing to, to close on is that um, our expectations of uh, performance uh, from uh, commercial devices like our phone, but also um, IoT devices that will re rely on these networks as well, which are um, going to be flooding the market over time, and a lot of data is going to be fun funneling through these um, through these uh, five five G networks as they expand. Is if they're not reliable, which sounds like inherently these kinds of uh, out of the system uh, types of influences, uh, like what's being proposed these uh, sharing with uh, Department of Defense, as an example, will make these networks unreliable and commercially uh, unviable. Um, is that, do you think that's accurate? Um, well, they, they could ultimately made to be reliable, um, though gen what, what complexity usually means is that things take longer than you expected. Um, sure. But ultimately they can be made to work, but it's that taking longer that's the real problem. Um, when we're in a, you know, on, in a race today for deployment. Um, and then the other thing to keep in mind is that the commercial networks, um, they use a portfolio of spectrum assets um, for extremely reliable operation. They use low band for coverage, um, you know, mid band for capacity, high band for additional um, capability. And they use a system called carrier aggregation where these different radio bands can be combined together to create this extremely reliable network. So in this instance, that's where the DOD system would be much less reliable because presumably based on um, every indication would only operate in these mid-band frequencies, which is somewhat you know, fragile frequencies compared to say the lower bands. Okay. Um, so, so unless the DOD system was developed the same depth as current commercial networks, it will never have the same types of capabilities. So not only is the spectrum um, sharing aspect problematic, but the fact the way it would be deployed um, would in fact be a less reliable network. So there's Thanks. just no shortage of issues here. Sure. Okay, well, this is both concerning and very informative. Um, thank you for your time, sir. This has been Lincoln Shorts. Uh